What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought that I would do a bookshelf tour. The title says minimalist, which I used to be, but I don't really consider myself a minimalist these days, but I definitely used to be. And some of those um, tactics that I use definitely still stick around and play a big part in my life. I don't know how many books I have. Uh, I will list it. I'll count them. I've never counted that before. But I will count them and put it like right here so you can see. I'm definitely more of a minimalist when it comes to books. If I don't like a book, like I'm talking like three stars plus, I get rid of it almost right away. I take it to a free little library that we have uh, right down the street and maybe I trade it out for something if there's something there but most of the time I don't. The only reason that I really ever have books coming in then are gifts, uh, arcs from publishers which is really really rare, um, uh, thrift store finds which are normally amazing and uh, if there's a really really good deal like uh, Barnes & Noble is just having it 2 for 10 on hardbacks so I picked up two of those. So it's rare that I have books coming in but once I read a book if it's honestly not above like three stars I normally get rid of it so I'm very uh, selective on what I do keep um, and every book that I have that I've read is one that I've fallen in love with or at least it's like a four or five star. So yeah I just thought that I would show you guys kind of what I have and go through them because I didn't think it would take too long since I don't have very many books. I will say that if I uh, could I would have more books. Um, I still even if I had a huge library even if I had three four hundred books you know like a lot of booktubers do even if I had that many I still they would either be unread or the only ones that I've read would still probably be like three to five stars that's it like I know a lot of people keep books that they rate like one two and three stars mine would probably have to be a really like on the edge three or higher to keep it still I just stand by that and everybody's different and it's everybody's own library so obviously everybody can be different um but that's just kind of how I am I like to look at my bookshelf and see books that I love I really like looking at my bookshelf and seeing books that I hated <laughs> But like I said, that's just me. If I could, I would have a bigger library, but I would still definitely be selective about it. So I do have some minimalist tactics, but right now it's minimalist, but that's not to say I wish it always was, if that makes sense. <laughs> I have all the books here. I'm just going to go through each of them. And then I also have a couple books over there and then my current read. And that's it. So this is kind of the overview. I have like my little rainbow shelf right here. These two books need to go to the free little library. I'm getting rid of both of them. There are some right here, and then I have some over in another bookshelf that I will show you guys in a second. Um, but these are kind of random or textbooky, or they just don't fit on here well. So let's just get started. I'll explain more as I go. So the first book is The History of Africa by Molif Asante. This was a textbook for class. Pretty Happy by Kate Hudson. This was a gift. Then I have Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. This is obviously a classic. Every Day by David Levithan. This is unread. I guess I should tell you which ones I've read and haven't read. Read part of, started but didn't finish read when I was little. Haven't read. Um, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. I've actually never read that. Odyssey oh, by Homer. This is a classic, one of my favorite books that I've had to read in school ever. I love it. Raw Doll, BFG, obviously a fave. This was actually a gift by a teacher. Oh my god. And uh, I've just held on to it since. I love this book. I actually just reread this in 2016 because um, I wanted to see what it was about. I kind of had forgotten and I fell in love with it all over again. Magnolia Story by Chip and Joanna Gaines. This is actually amazing, amazing book. Really motivating actually. This is Girk's book. See, Girk, these are like half Girk's too. Um, Inheritance by Sharon Mullum. I don't know. It's a science book. It's a Ghost Map by Stephen Johnson. Girk uh, needed this for school. Um, and I actually read it with him. We read it like aloud to each other because it's actually very interesting and I I ended up writing the paper for his class on this book for him so I ended up actually diving pretty deep into this book and this story and um, it's really it. It's a true story and it's actually fascinating. I highly recommend it. Across by Marie Lu, one of my favorites. Obviously read that. Med School Uncensored. Another one for Girk. The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Uh, Girk got this for himself. Um, and he got pretty far and then he stopped reading it. But I'm excited to dive into this. And I know he was loving it too. Um, I think he just got busy with school or so. So we're both super stoked for that one. Moving on. Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. One Dark Throne. And also 
Queens of Fenburn. I don't have the third one, and I haven't even read these two. I just got them a couple months ago. This was the first fantasy I ever read. It holds a soft spot in my heart. Um, and I do want to continue with the series, obviously, but I feel like I need to reread this one over again because I read it in 2016. Mark, so not one I picked. Don't know where it came from either. Ohio by Stephen Markley. It's a hunka. Super floppy, though. I don't even know what this is about, to be honest. Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. Love this. It's set in Oregon, which is where I am from. So uh, I loved it. How to Hang a Witch by Adriana Mather. This one was also pretty good. I think I gave this a 4.5 or 4. I think I gave this like 3.5 or 4. I can't quite remember. They were pretty similar. The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. Heard it's really good. Haven't read it. Just picked that one up on Book Outlet. Another arc here, Save Me from Dangerous Men by S.A. Lilchuk. Read this one um, back in winter. And I think I gave it a 4.5. Uh, four, four, I think. I actually liked it a lot more than I thought I would. That was the first adult thriller I've ever read. This one came unsolicited as well. I really have no desire to read this, but I really always feel bad not giving books a chance. So this is From the Corner of the Oval by Beck Dory Stein. Then I picked this one up. Barnes & Noble is having a super good deal, so I actually got this book for five bucks, which is super good. Um, I know Kayla really, really liked this one. I think on her, like, uh, reading all Goodreads choices for the... What is that? What is that called? I forget what it's called. The Goodreads, like, choice picks or whatever. She read all of the thrillers, and this one, I believe, was her favorite. So that really inspired me to pick it up because she's kind of a queen of thriller, you know, so I uh, thought I would really like that one. Shakespeare text with modern line for line translation, so Romeo and Juliet, uh, yeah, good stuff. Love that shit. I actually really like Shakespeare, like, a lot. Our House by Louise Candlish. I read uh, last fall for Witchathon. I loved this. I really, really want a final copy. My True Love Gave to Me by a ton of different people. Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. This is a middle grade. <laughs> Like I said, I have a very wide range of tastes. City of Lost, whoops, Lost City of Z by David Gran. Got this in a subscription box that was sent to me, um, The Wordy Traveler. I haven't read this yet, but really, really want it. Um, if you don't know, I'm an anthropology major, archaeology major, technically. Um, so it's obviously very relevant and interesting, but I tried to watch the movie, actually, before I had the book. See, it says first read the book, but uh, I didn't. Um, so I tried to watch the movie, and I really hated the movie. So I don't know. That's made me hesitant, but I'm sure it would be better than the movie. These are just my, yeah, my cliff notes for the Odyssey, like I said. This also came in the same subscription box as this one, as did this one. This is The Good Girl's Guide to Getting Lost by Rachel Friedman. And right at Machu Picchu by Mark Adams. Like I said, I'm an archaeology major, so stuff like this is like right up my alley. Um, but I just haven't had the time or desire, I guess, to pick this one up. Um, I did read the first page once. I was testing out what book I felt like I was in the mood for, and I wasn't in the mood for this one, but I did read the first page and a half, and it was actually fucking hilarious. So I'm really, really stoked. I thought it would be more, like, scientific. Like, this one is very, like, scientifically written, a little dense, in my opinion, um, but this one apparently is just gonna be funny as fuck, so I'm really excited for that one. The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. Love this book. Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. This is a book that I had to read just for a class this last term. It wasn't my favorite book that I read in the class, but I have always heard so much about Madame Bovary, so I was very, very excited um, to actually get to have the opportunity to, like, force myself to read it, I guess. <laughs> Lumine Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. My favorite books of all time. Sorry for the glare. I have yet to get my hands on Gemina, which breaks my heart, but, um, I just love this book so much. I think they're honestly fantastic. The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Obviously a fascinating book. Dracula by Bram Stoker. Obviously a classic. I would love to read this one day. I um, just haven't had a chance to get around to it because it's intimidating as fuck. But um, yeah, this is the uh, bendy pleather editions from Barnes & Noble. Both this one and this one are. I would love to have every single one. Um, I think that would be sick to have them just all together kind of on a separate shelf maybe down 
here or something. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and also through The Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. Love this, just reread it back in 2017. Um, so those are all the books. I will show you really quick the two books that I'm getting rid of. Um, Cavendish Home for Boys and Girls by Claire Legrand. This book made me never and actually refuse to ever read a other Claire Legrand book. I don't care if it's Socko Girls. I don't care if it's Furyborn. I don't care about any of that. She completely took the idea of Coraline and put it in a fucking book and changed maybe a handful of things. And I just don't find that respectable in my opinion. I had to have for work. We all took our Clifton strength test. Um, but... I don't need it anymore. I don't really care. So I'm just gonna um, give those to the free little library. Just um, then we just have some vinyls right here for our vinyl player. Oh, a lot of these ones in this last part, because it's only a six compartment bookshelf, as you saw, a lot of these ones are textbooks or they're just books that didn't fit. So like these two books are black and I felt like I just had too much black up there. Things like that, you know? Um, so I'm not gonna pull all of these out necessarily. Um, here, I'll take these top ones. Um, so MCAT, that's for Girk for studying for the MCAT, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Principles of Pharmacology, uh, textbook, just a world atlas, good to have, you never know. Um, Worlds Together, Worlds Apart, that's a history textbook, I think. Um, a Psychoactive Substances textbook, this is an archaeology book. Sometimes I Lie, um, by Alice Feeney. Um, I started reading this. I don't have my bookmark in it. I got like 20 pages into this and then I got distracted by school. School started so I didn't have time to finish it but I was really liking it. It's super super short so I might try to pick it up before the next term but I was really enjoying it and that's why it's here instead of up there because um, I was in the middle of reading it. This is another book that I had to get for my uh, literary class this term. This is a collection of Leo Tolstoy's um, stories, short stories. And particularly, uh, I read the Kreutzer Sonata, um, and again, I was in love with it. You can see how much I just marked it up. Uh, and the Kreutzer Sonata was my favorite book that I read this term. Um, so you could say in the past couple months, it's my favorite story or book that I read. So absolutely love that one. Um, really great. Pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> but that was kind of his point. So <laughs> I actually picked this up at Goodwill uh, maybe two months ago um, because it was on there for, I think it was a dollar, 50 cents, a dollar I reckon, um, and it's Geronimo Stilton, The Curse of the Cheese Pyramid, book two. Um, this, these were around when I was a little one, and this book particularly is actually what made me want to be an archaeologist because he goes and visits um, an archaeologist in Egypt and a doctor there. So this is actually the book that made me want to be an archaeologist, so I thought I should pick it up uh, because it's kind of why I am becoming the profession I'm becoming, so it means a lot to me, honestly. This book just showed up like two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, um, completely unsolicited, but it's not an ARC, so if you know what this is, <laughs> or you've ever even heard of it before, let me know, but I don't know how it got here. Um, oh, there we go. It's an advanced reading copy. So it is an arc, but, oh, right there. See, it says it right there. I'm so used to them having tabs up here, or right there, or something like that, but it's all the way down at the bottom. I've never seen that before. Uh, but this is Far Flung by Cassandra Kircher. It's a memoir, which are my least favorite books, probably. So I don't know where that came from. It's super short. I might just flip through it. Who knows? Um, my brother is really into the outdoors, so actually maybe he would like that, find it interesting, but I don't know. We'll see. Neil deGrasse Tyson's Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. Girk always just like grabs this to go, so it's kind of nice to just leave it right here too because it's you can tell how messed up it is. Um, it's usually in one of our bags. Um, but Not Buddy by Christopher Paul Curtis is one of my favorite books when I was a kid. The Night Before by Wendy Walker. This actually is an arc, I believe. Yep. Uh, it came out in May. I'm so bad at reading arcs when I'm supposed to, but um, yeah. This one I did request as well. Um, it's a thriller. These are here just because I'm either currently reading them, just read them, or just received them. So, yeah. So that is all of that part. Now let's move on to my other little bookshelf, which is, if we turn, right there. Get my ring light thing out of the way. So these are just a couple books that don't particularly fit very well over there, mainly because they're multicolored. <laughs> um, this one I don't like over there because it's too short. It looks weird in the bookshelf. These two are multicolored, or these three, I should say, are multicolored. It's kind of funny because they're all the same color. Like, they all have red and tan and yellow. That's so funny. 
But anyways, yeah, I don't know where to put them on the rainbow, so they're just here. Grey's Anatomy, that's all right up Girk's Alley. Um, the Greatest Benefit to Mankind by Roy, Roy Porter. Um, that was a textbook that Girk had for class. Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Haven't read this. Stalloway by Virginia Woolf. This was another one for my literary class. I actually only got about, yeah, halfway, I would say. This isn't my bookmark. I got probably like halfway through. Um before the class ended so I didn't actually end up finishing it but I do want to finish this book because it is such a classic and I do just kind of want to see um what it's about you know and then this I actually picked up from the free little library it's pretty torn and worn but it's okay um this is from the free little library when I went to go return a couple books this one was actually there um so I decided to pick it up. So this is uh, Four Past Midnight by Stephen King. I've never read Stephen King. My dad's a huge fan. A lot of the people um, here on BookTube that I really, really like um, really love Stephen King. So obviously I feel like I need to give Stephen King a chance. I also did want to mention that my current read right now is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Um, so I just thought I would mention that too because it's not on the shelves because um, I'm reading it. So yeah. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and seeing my bookshelves and a little bit about um, each of them, I guess, because I went pretty in-depth. Be sure to like this video if you did like it, subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every time I upload. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know if you've read any of these books or if there's any of them that I really should get on reading ASAP. So I hope that you guys have a good day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!